Now for the fun and more complicated stuff, rotations. This is where you need to recall that each quadrant, when I say quadrant, I mean each subplane that is a result of the division of the um, two-dimensional coordinate plane because of the intersection of the x and y axis. Each quadrant has um, angle measurement of 90 degrees, but I'm going to illustrate that so don't be too wary if you don't uh, get exactly what I'm talking about, okay? All right, so we're going to graph the image of triangle RST after a rotation of 270 degrees. And um, something that you can notice about 270 degrees is that it's a multiple of 90 degrees. So if you have a calculator handy or if you're on Google, just divide 270 degrees by 90 and you're going to see that you get the number three. So hold on to that number in your mind for a moment. So we want to rotate triangle RST counterclockwise. When you rotate an object counterclockwise, you are moving it to the left. Clockwise direction, everyone I'm pretty sure is familiar with, goes around in a circle in a, white, a rightward direction, okay? But on the coordinate plane, we can either move counterclockwise rotating to the left or clockwise rotating to the right. So this um, question stem is basically giving us the directive to move it, rotate it, angle, ang angle it differently to the left. So and our stationary position that we're moving it with respect to is going to be the origin. Okay, because you always have to have a point that you're moving it about. And most of the times in geometry, you're moving about the origin. Sometimes on an exam, they'll say move it about point negative seven, six. And we're not getting into that here because this is just a basic introduction. So a rotation turns a figure around a fixed point. And again, I just told you our fixed point, according to this question stem, is going to be the point zero, zero, or the origin of the coordinate plane. So 270 degrees is three-fourths of a full 360-degree turn. In case you don't know, if you were to make a full turn, if you were to start at this point and go around in one full turn or one full revolution, you would have traveled 360 degrees. And because each quadrant has an angular measurement of 90 degrees, okay? And 90 degrees times four, there's four quadrants, gives you 360. But here we're only asked to move or rotate 270 degrees, which is three times 90 or three fourths of a full turn. So we're basically asked to move from here to here. This is where mathema mathematics, um, well, not mathematics. This is where figure manipulation or movement gets a little tricky in geometry. And it gives students a feeling of consternation. When I say consternation, I mean discomfort because you're stepping out of the world of multiplication, addition, subtraction, exponents. And you're, you literally have to tap into your imagination and start to visualize objects moving, twisting and turning when you get into rotational transformations, okay? So let's just do a few more illustrations so that we can get more comfortable with rotating. So each quadrant, again, measures 90 degrees. So if I were to move from here to here, I'm going to, be, I'm going to be rotating 90 degrees. So we start at zero degrees, and if you were to move up until the division between quadrant one and quadrant two, you would have traveled 90 degrees. And if you were to move from quadrant um, one to the end point, 
or the end wall, you could say of quadrant two, you would have moved another 90 degrees, but a, you've moved a total of 180 degrees from your original starting position here. And if you were to take it a step further and move, an, or rotate rather, not move, you're rotating, you're twisting and turning your um, angle. If you were to twist another 90 degrees counterclockwise, you would have moved a full 270 degrees. Recall, I just told you that moving counterclockwise mean, means that you're going, you're shifting, you're turning to the left as opposed to clockwise, which requires you to turn to the right. But here's the trick. If you move 270 degrees counterclockwise, essentially all you did was move 90 degrees clockwise. I just want you to sit with that thought for a moment because some people get thrown off by this. I know when I was first introduced to this concept, it threw me off a little bit. So 270 degrees can also be considered one fourth of a full 360 degree turn in the, um, I think I meant to say clockwise. We're gonna X out the counter. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm so sorry about this. I meant to say clockwise. So yeah, I don't mean to say counter. It's also going to be considered one fourth of a turn in the counterclockwise direction or a rotation to the right. Okay. Let's go back. So basically, well, no, actually, I think that was correct. So basically, 270 degrees counterclockwise is the same as rotating 90 degrees clockwise, okay? So if we were to go around in a semicircle or an arc of 270 degrees, we would end up here. But <laughs> a shortcut to that route is just moving clockwise 90 degrees. You end up in the same position. This is where you have to start to use um, how would you say deductive reasoning? Because it's not, it's not, you're not directly told that if you're moving 200 or if you're rotating rather 270 degrees to the left, that means you're also rotating 90 degrees to the right. This is where you have to start to uh, really use your thinking hats, okay? So this is also considered a 90 degree rotation clockwise. All right, so here we have R prime, and it might not be apparent to you yet that we've taken R and we've literally lassoed it and turned it about the origin to end up here at R, the position R prime. And so when you're asked to rotate a point or a geometric figure on a two-dimensional coordinate plane 270 degrees, there's a basic rule that you're going to follow. You're basically going to switch the numerical value of the x-coordinate with the numerical value of the y-coordinate. And in, in doing that, you're going to negate one of them. And the one that we had to negate here was basically the value of the or original x coordinate, okay? So what we did was we pre we're rotating about the origin. So the origin is our stationary point. And we maintain the distance or the length of point R to the origin and we lassoed it when I say lasso, I mean we swung it all the way around um, 270 degrees, which also means that we just rotated it 90 degrees in the clockwise direction. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing with point S. This 
honestly tripped a lot of the students that I work with up uh, because um, they need a lot of other foundational tools to be able to help them see how rotation works. So if you're not totally grasping this right away, don't, don't feel uncomfortable. Like it, everyone feels a little uneasy with this concept when they're first introduced to it. So we've taken point S and we've rotated it 270 degrees about the origin or we've basically turned it 90 degrees counter, I mean clockwise, because a rotation 270 degrees about the origin is the same thing as rotating 90 degrees counterclockwise, clockwise also about the origin. And again, we're naming all our newly positioned points prime because they're not the same, because they're not in their original positions. So in order to get point S, we see that our original point was positioned at an X coordinate of seven and a Y coordinate of 10. But all we did was, no, actually it's an X coordinate of six and a Y coordinate of 10. All we did was interchange the X and the Y and we negated the X because we're now positioned in quadrant four and if you're going to interchange your x and y, all the x coordinate, all the y coordinates in quadrant four are negative. They can't be positive, okay? So s had a location of 6, 10. s prime has a location of 10, negative 6. Again, we switched the x and y and negated the x. This is what happens if you're asked to rotate something 270 degrees counterclockwise. And for most people who deal with this type of rotation, all they do is memorize the set of rules, okay? Well, we have a little bit more time left, so let me speed it up a little bit. We're going to do the same thing to point T. We're interchanging its X and Y coordinate value. In the original position, it's positioned at an X coordinate of five and a Y coordinate of one. So interchanging that is going to put us at one five. And again, we have to negate the Y because in quadrant four, you have all negative values. And so we form our new triangle, which is congruent to the original triangle. It's just that its angle of rotation has been shifted or, yeah, it's, it's not in the original angular position. It's been shifted 270 degrees counterclockwise, or you can say it's been rotated 90 degrees clockwise.